So a new version of FL Studio is inevitably coming, and this video is covering six updates that we need in FL Studio 21 for parametric EQ. First thing being more bands. So right now we have seven bands, which usually is enough, but there are definitely times where you need more bands. I recommend 10. Now I'm not saying go the route of infinite bands like some other EQs, but I would definitely like at least 10 bands. However, you could just get away with adding a dedicated low pass and high pass filter to the current parametric EQ2. That would give us nine bands total, and that would prevent people from having to load up two EQs just to do additional cuts or boosts. Number two, spectrum analysis. So it was pretty cool to see how FL Studio went the route of a more unique type of spectrum analysis. But overall, I find that this isn't as useful as your traditional spectrum analysis. And that's why multiple times on my channel, I recommend third-party plugins like Span. So it would be really nice to have this type of visual analysis inside of our EQ instead of having to load up a third-party plugin because seeing this doesn't exactly give you the same type of information that Span gives you. It's just a lot easier to read and visually see how much higher particular frequencies are compared to the other ones. Yeah, in here you can see certain frequencies are brighter, meaning it's louder than the other. But inside of Span, you actually get the exact amount of dB in terms of how much louder a sound is compared to another. Number three, mid-side and left-right processing. So this might not be something that a lot of beginners use, but once you get into intermediate or more advanced mixing and mastering, mid-side processing is really important in terms of controlling the different frequencies in different areas of the stereo field. So being able to control any of these nodes and simply right-clicking and switching it to mid-side or left-right processing, that's really a must in terms of really controlling your stereo field and your stereo image and balancing the frequencies in between them. I totally get that ImageLine has created plugins to mitigate that problem, specifically Patcher. So you could load up a parametric EQ2 inside of Patcher and then route it to different stereo tools within FL Studio, but it would be very convenient to just have it inside of one plugin and not have to load up multiple plugins or multiple chains just to do what you really need to do inside of your EQ unit. Number four, dynamic processing. So once again, I feel like I'm constantly recommending third-party plugins because of the limited capabilities of some of the stock plugins inside of FL Studio. One of them being TDR Nova, here it is right here. And basically this is a free dynamic EQ. So basically what this does, once a frequency reaches a certain threshold, this EQ will duck it down, basically acting as a compressor, but only within these specific frequency ranges. So you could see how that could be very helpful when you have certain frequencies that are popping out, but aren't always popping out. That way you're able to maintain the original sound as much as possible and you're just getting rid of those bad frequencies whenever they pop up. So it would be great to have that functionality in a parametric EQ3 where we can set certain thresholds and have the EQ duck those frequencies whenever we actually need those ducked rather than having those ducked the entire time. Number five, having a linear phase option inside of parametric EQ3. Right now to get any linear phase EQ, you actually have to load up a reverb plugin inside of FL Studio, which is quite odd. Let me show you where that is and why I don't like it. So the plugin is called Fruity Convolver and this is a convolution reverb. But if you click this equalizer tab right here, you actually pull up the linear phase EQ inside of FL Studio. However, I have a huge problem with this EQ. It's just really hard to get in here and get the EQ shapes and curves that you're really looking for. It's just not very user friendly compared to just using your traditional parametric EQ. So it'd be really nice, just like we have this high quality mode, which is oversampling, if we also had a linear phase mode. That way we could use this EQ more for mastering situations where we're trying to maintain the phase relationships in our low end, or maybe in mixing situations where we're trying to mix our bass and our kick, and we're trying to maintain the phase relationship that we created between our kick and our bass. I have some tutorials about that. Definitely check those out. But once you line up the phase relationship, the kick and the bass, and you'll get a harder hitting low end once you do so. But once you start adding 
EQs to either of those sounds, you actually slightly change the phase relationship. So in order to counteract that, you use a linear phase EQ and that will maintain whatever phase relationship that you created with those two sounds. Just know that every time you move this EQ around, you're actually changing the phase relationship between the two sounds. And last but not least, number six actually isn't dealing with parametric EQ at all. It's actually dealing with the EQ inside of our mixer. So right now, the way that our mixer works, this EQ comes after all these effects. It would be nice to have the option of pre-fader or post-fader equalization with the EQ here in the mixer. That way we don't have to load up an entire EQ plugin just to do a simple cut or a simple boost. Because this EQ comes after all of your effects, I find this EQ is almost useless especially when you're using plugins like compression where you want to tame the sound before you get into your compression, cutting out the extra low end or extra frequencies that you don't need before you go into your compressor tends to help out the compressor quite a bit. So it would be really nice just to have this EQ either pre or post fader, depending on what you need for that particular situation on that particular mixer track. I know that ImageLine does actually watch my channel. They've shared my videos in the past. So hopefully we can get the word out. I have an entire series on things that I'd like in FL Studio 21. So definitely leave your comments down below and your comment might get added to the list. I'll see you guys in the next one.